Okay, hi, now welcome to this first video on responding to change. And in this video, we're going to have a look at how the nervous system works. The nervous system is one of two systems which we use in order to respond to change. The other one is known as the endocrine system, and that will be covered in a later video. Now, the nervous system is a very fast way of us detecting changes in the environment. Any change that we actually detect in the, in the environment sorry, is known as a stimulus. Stimulus. The plural for that is stimuli. So external stimuli or a single stimulus. One example of a stimulus might be that uh, an animal can see a predator coming. The, pre the stimulus would be the light that it has, it has seen because of the predator being present. That signal needs to be sent to the central nervous system of the animal so it can then decide to respond. And so let's have a look at the different components of the nervous system. The first is known as a receptor. A receptor is exactly what we're going to use to detect the stimulus. For example, the, re the receptors in this case will be receptors in the eyes. They will allow detection of the predator. Now, the signal will be passed on from the receptor to special cells known as neurons. Neurons. Now, there is more than one type of neuron. I'm going to briefly outline them here. The first is the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron is exactly as it sounds. It is going to pass the signal which has first been sensed by the receptor. So, once the stimulus uh, which is the predator, has been detected by the receptors in the eyes, that signal will first be passed to the sensory neuron. There is then... Now I'm doing this for a di in a different colour for a good reason. There is then a neuron known as a relay neuron. These neurons, and the reason I've done them in green, are not always going to be active in a response. A relay neuron, the job of a relay neuron is to pass the signal from one type of neuron, which is the sensory, to the other type of neuron, which is the next one. And that neuron is a motor neuron. So we have sensory, relay and motor. Okay, something else important, of course, is the CNS or the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the spinal cord, spinal cord, and of course the brain. So the central nervous system is going to process the information, decide what to do and then send a signal back out and that's going to be actually via a motor neuron. Okay and lastly it's all well and good detecting danger in the environment but if you detect that there's a predator around and then you just sit there and don't do anything then it's not really worthwhile. So the effectors effectors are exactly what are going to cause the response. So for example in this case if you were to run away or the animal was to run away the effectors would be the muscles. So the muscles allow it to run away. So your effectors are going to be muscles or they could be uh, glands as well. And all glands do is they secrete different chemicals. Uh, and that could actually be involved in the endocrine system, which we'll look at later. So your effectors or your effector organs are going to be muscles and glands. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what these neurons actually look like. Right, so down here we have a sensory neuron on the left and a motor neuron on the right. So it's sensory and motor. Now you'll notice that these don't look like normal cells. The normal cells that you're probably used to seeing are just big circular blobs. And so these actually look quite strikingly different. Now the sensory neuron, one big difference is that you have this here, which is known as the cell body. The cell body, and that has been pushed off to the side. So you've got this long chain here. This is known as the axon but this just carries the impulse from one place to another. So an impulse will flow down this way, all the way down, and there we go. Um, and basically, the receptor will be located up here. So the receptor will send the signal 
down the sensory neuron, which will then go and it will end up connecting to the CNS. So this will connect to your CNS down here. Okay, now a motor neuron, this here is the cell body. So the cell body there is, rather than being pushed to the side, is bang in the middle. And that's because the CNS will be located up here and it can directly reach this cell body and pass a signal through the neuron. Now the signal will then go this way and it'll end up with, we should have some nerve endings there, but nerve endings which will attach to effectors. So this will be attached to your effectors. Okay, so we'll just run through the entire process. So to begin with, there is a stimulus. A stimulus which is going to eventually cause a response. So this might be you've smelt something, you've heard something, you've seen something. The stimulus will be that thing that you've smelt, heard, seen, um, felt, etc. Okay, so the stimulus will then be detected by a receptor. Receptor. Okay, the receptor will then send a signal down the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron. Do bear in mind that it might not just be one sensory neuron, but we're going to keep it simple for this. The sensory neuron will then take that signal to the central nervous system. The central nervous system will then process the signal, decide what response to carry out, and then send a signal to a motor neuron. A motor neuron. Now the motor neuron takes that signal to the effector to the effector and the effector will be your muscles or your glands and then the effector will cause a response so we've gone from stimulus which is something in the environment and then this chain of events allows us to carry out a response and our ability to do that is what makes us of course different to things which are non-living Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We did go fairly quickly, so do feel free to pause, rewind the video as you need. Uh, but if you do have any questions, please do comment in the box below or send me an email via the link. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.